This is Dale K. Brereton, and this is The Real Spiel. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you to all my subscribers. I uh, look forward to today to um, adding members to, to our family. Um, Kyrie Irving is still not playing basketball. Kyrie Irving is still not playing basketball for the Brooklyn Nets. And nobody on the Brooklyn Nets roster understands why. Beat writers have been asking, when's Kyrie coming back? We don't know. How come Kyrie's not playing? We're not sure. We don't understand why he's not playing. We don't know. Have you been in communication with Kyrie? Yeah, he communicates with the team all the time. He's sending text messages. He's encouraging us. We don't know. The Brooklyn Nets almost got 200 put on them. 200 put on them yesterday. I've never seen a score like that. I, they almost got 200 put on them yesterday by the Sacramento Kings of all people. <laughs> they almost gave you 200. 153 to 123 or something like that. That's a that's that's a that's called a good old fashioned swoop it. That's what that's called. <laughs> that's what that's called. A good old fashioned bubble. And I looked even I even look, I even took a peek at the uh at the uh stats. And nobody from the Kings really had an exceptional game. Just a bunch of guys playing together and put a serious butt whooping on the Brooklyn Nets. And, and it goes to it goes to question: Are these guys truly interested in basketball anymore? Is it, is it, are they interested in basketball at all? Um, and and you know, all the talking heads are saying, "Oh, why isn't Kyrie playing? It's he served his five days suspension. He's he's, he's paid his penance." He's, he's atoned for his sins. All these idiots, I call them idiots because that's what they call Kyrie. All these idiots, you know where they live. They live on TNT. TNT, those guys. The idiots, really only two of them. And Ernie, I'm going to give you an idiot. I'm going to give you an idiot badge too. Not you, Kenny. You get to go. But them idiots, TNT, uh, they acting like, oh, what, what, what's going on? Why isn't Kyrie playing? Why isn't Kyrie playing? <laughs> Oh boy, you know you you know that that kid that gets you in trouble, gets you in trouble, and then he comes and he he asks the teacher, can 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 Dell come out and play with us? Weren't you just the guy that said that Dell was Dell was bullying you and and doing all kind of stuff to you, and you, now you come in here asking him to come out and play with you? What was what's wrong with you? That's who those clowns are. Sorry, idiots. I don't want to disrespect clowns. I don't want to disrespect clowns by calling them Charles Barkley and Shaq. So, that's the NBA. But in other news, um, tonight, myself and Harry R Rosenberg, Rabbi Harry Rosenberg, are about to have our debate. Um, I'm going to call it a friendly debate because I'm friendly. I'm a friendly guy. Uh, I'm going to ask him some questions. Are you going to answer them or are you not going to answer them? Are you going to accept them or are you not going to accept them? I'm going to present him with some with some information. He's going to take it or he ain't going to take it. That's it. This is for y'all. <laughs> ain't changing what I believe. But I believe there's some questions that need to be answered. And, and uh, I've, I've sent a video last night. And for you guys to take a look at it, um, that video was about allowing you to be part of the process it's going to be a live debate tonight 7 30 sorry 7 p.m eastern standard time 7 p.m eastern standard time which is about 2 a.m in israel and he said he doesn't mind he'll be up so god bless him he's going to be up and, and available and uh i know that you you know folks i, I want you guys i'm going to prepare you i'm going to prepare you because you don't know what i'm going to ask you don't know how you don't know how i'm going to approach it but I, I, I want to be clear that I'm not going to approach it the way Ron Dalton did. I'm a different. I have different. Um, I have a different skew on it. Ron Dalton has his skew. I have my skew. Nothing I say is an attempt to invalidate Ron Dalton's information. But my information is my information. Okay, and I'm not going to be apologetic to none of you ninjas for my information. Okay. I have scholastic information, academic information, 
I have scientific information, and I'm going to stand by my information. And um, like I said, I ain't afraid of none of you ninjas. Um, so I hope that you're able to sit, listen, and uh, contribute. Definitely, I'm going to take questions. I'm going to take questions in the live. Um, uh, I'm I'm going to hit him. I'm going to hit. I'm, I, my job is to hit him with with factual, scientific, historical, biblical, and cultural information. That's my job, right? And I take my job extremely seriously. And that job is going to be handled today. And his job is to is to establish his historical, I believe, rabbinical, Talmudic, um, and personal information as well. And let the chips fall where they may, because essentially at the end of the day, um, people hold beliefs and their beliefs are their beliefs, right? We're trying to establish facts. I'm not going to have a struggle over 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 Christianity and Judaism. Um, I'm not going to have that. That's not what this debate is about. Um, going there might happen. Absolutely might happen. And I'm ready for that conversation, too. But to today, it's really more about the ancestral aspects of um, the people of the book, and that's that's kind of what that's kind of the position I'm 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 coming from. I'm also coming from the historical aspect of, of Zionism and its and its role in current day society, and uh, I, I think I think if Rabbi uh, Rosenberg speaks his mind. I think you guys will be pleasantly surprised what he has to say about that. And that's just that's just that's just uh, that's that's not him telling me anything. That's just me believing that uh, I think you guys might be surprised. I don't know. I I don't know. Let's see. But at the end of the day, um, we're going to hold down and buckle down on what we believe, and and we're going to start to teach it and build it out as curriculum. And so what you're going to be seeing coming um, on my page very soon is you're going to be seeing memberships. Uh, I'm going to have, a, it's called Earth. I'm going to have an Earth membership, Wind, Fire, and Spirit, four-tier membership um, from supporters, just basic people that want to support like you guys have been doing. Thank you for my super, super thanks, um, friends, all my super thanks, friends. I really appreciate you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure I get all your names. Um, and... Uh, so I can give you a shout out like I promised. Uh, and, I, and I try to do that on the lives. Also, um, it'll build all the way up to individuals who want to actually teach curriculum. If you have a, a calling or desire to teach history at certain levels, teach African studies, teach uh, Semitic studies, Afro-Semitic studies on a particular level. And you know, all these things have levels. Um, I, I know there's very many um, qualified individuals who are now out there teaching things um, as far as Egyptology, um, things like that. You're gonna find that my, my course load is a little bit, it's a little bit different. It's definitely historical. Um, and I think you'll love it. You know, I think you're gonna love it. That's my personal opinion. I think you're gonna love it. I think I'm good at what I do, but um, that's, it's, it's up to you. But at the end of the day, man, we're gonna stand on what we, we said. We're gonna stand on what we know, what history has already shown us. Uh, we haven't just popped up and, and decided to call ourselves something, which is the allegation. All of a sudden, black people wanna be Jewish. Why, why, why do you wanna be Jewish? Leave us alone. Like that's basically what the, the mainstream uh, European Jewish person is saying, that we some, somehow desire their uh, <laughs> We desire their identity, right? And um, it's really laughable, to be very honest with you. You know, it's kind of really laughable because we know everybody wants to be us. We are. You know, the only reason you wouldn't want to be a black man is, or a black person is, is, is the disappropriation of wealth and privilege that does happen in the 20th, in the 20th century, 19th century, 18th century. Like that's that's probably the only reason. But you know, we see who are the most popular individuals on the planet right now. And, sports, music, entertainment, you know, and uh, I, I, I don't see why they would think that we just simply want to be them. I, I don't know why that, but the, the level of pride I see in how black people present themselves, they don't want to be anybody but themselves, nobody, you know, even to the point where they 
misappropriate information. My father is is a very intelligent man, and uh, he was the head of the Guard Emergency Branch in Trinidad and Tobago. And he is very clear. He says, I, I don't want nothing to do with Africa. I don't want anything to do with Africa. I'm a proud Trinidadian. We, we run a republic. This is our country. And this is a sentiment of many people who have, um, who have come from the Caribbean. They're proud of where, what they've built there and they realize they don't have anything in Africa, because many of us don't. And they claim their, um, the country that they took over. They were, they were enslaved there, but they took it over. And um, they're quite happy where they are. And if you understand the, and using Trinidad specifically, the 70s, when uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau and England were allowing um, members of the Caribbean to travel and to, to, uh, to immigrate, uh, you know, most of the affluent Trinidadians stayed home. They didn't go anywhere. The people that left, the people that left were the students and uh, trade workers. But the affluent stayed in Trinidad. They didn't go anywhere. They're like, we don't need to go. I'm not going to leave paradise to go in that cold country. You out here wearing a fur coat. <laughs> you out here wrapping animals around yourself. I'm very comfortable. My, my dad right now is retired, sleeping on a hammock somewhere in the Caribbean. With, with his fruits, his garden, his, 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 his beautiful his beautiful young wife. He's, he's enjoying himself, he's living his best life. So anyway, so that's my time. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys later on. Kyrie Irving not playing after seven games and counting. Uh, you know, I've been saying it, and I'm gonna to continue to say it. Somebody needs to knock on Joe Side's door, right? And if it's and, and I said it last night in my basketball live, go back and listen to that last night with, with the great Glenn Harding and Charlie Chase. Um, I said it last night at the end of the broadcast. Maybe Brooklyn requires a million man march. I'm telling you, and there's no better group to organize that million man march like the Hebrew Israelites. All right? I got give me two minutes. Give me two minutes to say this. All right. The black community needs to understand that different groups in our community are very useful. And we, see, we need to see ourselves like a nation, even though you don't have the same ideological principles. Many of you are not Hebrew Israelites. I'm not a Hebrew Israelite. But one thing I can appreciate about Hebrew Israelites is those brothers know how to organize. The Hebrew Israelites know how to organize and they know how to lock down on their dogmatic beliefs of who they are, they can articulate that and they can fight you with it. They can fight you with that Bible with it. Second group that we have to understand knows how to organize is the nation of Islam. And so when, when those two groups in the black community stand up and begin to say, hey, let, let's have a truce in respect to our ideology because we need to get some things organized for our people Oh my gosh, some things can happen. Some things can happen. The last group that we need to organize is, and I'm going to call you this because you reach, you reach a, a multiple of spheres, um, and this includes the Russell Simmons, the Kanye's, NBA players, sports stars, uh, Hollywood stars, is I'll call you guys the Black Multimillionaire Club. You guys are the individuals who've made incredible amounts of wealth in your craft. And as a collective, as a group, um, the trust fund, of, of you guys could put together a trust that simply, the interest alone, we, we won't even touch your capital, the interest alone will, will move all of these initiatives into place. All of these initiatives will into place. We won't show up in a position where we are ill-equipped. And there are some other things that I will not say on social media. There's some other groups. There's some other powerful organizations of black men. And you've seen them. They show up in states that are open carry states and they let you know, hey, we're here too. Don't, don't act up on us. We're here too. 
And those private groups have put themselves together too. And I've seen very many videos on that. When black men decide to put themselves together and organize, my friends, something to behold. And um, we're not at the point where we require a, a revolution of, of force. We're not at the point with that. We're not. If we were there, I'd say it. But we are at the point where we require a revolution of ideas and infrastructure. And um, we need to stop asking politicians to pass laws for it. No, 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 no. There's a place where you just take your stuff, baby. There's a place where you say, I'm just going to put my thing together. Let me explain really quickly. I said I was going to take two minutes. I lied. Um, universities need accreditation. And in order to be considered um, a university or a doctor or a professor, um, there are the accreditations of, uh, you know, the educational institutions that have already been established. I'm saying make all that crumble to the ground. I don't want your information. I don't want your education. I don't. And I'm going as far as saying that I don't want it from your Ivy League schools. I don't want it. I don't want, I don't want any of it. I really don't want it. I want to create our own institutions. Now, I'm not saying I'm, I'm going to snub my nose at science. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that uh, uh, I want to. I want to just create surgeons who haven't graduated high school. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we need to put together our own professions, our own professionals, and do what we do. Listen, last let, last part, last part. And and many immigrants to to the West know this. How many doctors and lawyers are running around in North America driving cabs, <laughs> running around in North America driving Ubers, but in their country, in the country of their origin. They were doctors. They were lawyers. Okay, I when my when my oldest, who now is in the medical field, when she was sick. Um, actually, she's not. It's not my oldest. It's my 15-year-old. When she was sick, she had uh, an ailment that we could not figure out. And and I said, listen, I'm, I'm taking her to the hospital. I took her to the hospital, and the tenured Caucasian doctor did not know what was wrong with her, and an, and an intern. An Indian intern walked in to the examination room and it took him 30 seconds to say, she's got Kawasaki disease. I've seen it all the time in India. Bam, right away. The, the, the tenured individual, Caucasian man, um, was, was scheduling a, a battery of tests to figure out what's going on. My daughter's eyes were blood, 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 blood red, which is a clear sign for Kawasaki disease. And now that I've seen that, I say, oh, this is, once I see, once your eyes are red like blood, the whites of your eyes are red like blood, Kawasaki disease. He knew right away. And that quick diagnosis saved because the Kawasaki disease attacks your heart and, and gives you heart condition, a heart condition um, for the rest of your life. His quick prognosis, diagnosis of her situation on sight saved my daughter. So I'm letting you know that conventional Western um, medicine, Western information, it ain't, all, it ain't all what it's cracked up to be. That's all I'm saying. And I don't need it. I don't need it. The minute he said that, I said, boy, I need to send, you know, shoot, I need to send, we need to send some people to India. Obama said it like this, and I'm done. Obama said that America is behind, is behind Asia in the areas of science, technology, and 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 information, they're behind. Our, the, he said that the work that our kids are doing in grade twelve, they're doing it in the ninth and the eighth grade. They're behind. Oh my God! You think you're you think you're advanced? You're not advanced. You're behind. You're behind. Stop calling third world countries and third world information third world. In order to get into certain universities in India, you need to have you need to have a 99 average to apply, not to get in. To apply, just to apply, you got to have about a 99 average just to apply. The best of the best of the best. Come on, okay. So I'm gonna leave it right there. Uh, we need some new thinking. We need some new infrastructure. But it starts with this conversation with uh, Harry Rosenberg today, Rabbi Harry Rosenberg. I'm gonna tell it, I'm gonna tell Harry Rosenberg who we are. 
and I'm going to challenge Harry Rosenberg on the origins of, of Ashkenazi, of Ashkenazi Jews, and who they think they are. And we're going to leave it at that, and we're going to move on. Love, peace, and hair grease. This is Del K. Brereton's The Real Spiel. Like, share, and subscribe, and uh, tell your friends. We're going to talk to the rabbi tonight. Thank you. 20 minutes, too long, but I hope you hung in there.